All right, what up, what up? It is your boys, BQ and TW with the Impact Lounge, number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. This is the Cool Factor Mailbag Show. If it's your first time here, it is the number one place to be for the Impact Wrestling fan. However, coincidentally, we seem to be the least favorite podcast of Impact Wrestling because uh, <laughs> we, keep, we, we keep it real. We keep it for real, for real. A little too real sometimes. Uh, but that, that's what it is. It's not the fanboy show. Uh, if you get guys didn't check our last uh, regular Cool Factor episode, TW got into a deep uh, Facebook uh, Facebook ad strategies and social media ad strategies of uh, Impact Wrestling. We did some some deep diving, so really, really, really good stuff. Very telling, very, very revealing on what they're doing and not doing to promote their shows. Mm-hmm. Uh, the, the actual shows that they're trying to get people in there in to show up for. To be uh to be butts and seats for so really really good stuff and we'll probably follow up on it a little bit next episode so yeah yeah and I think it's it's been cool like the response so far has been great it's only been out uh like a day or two and um the response has been phenomenal like people uh really seem to be loving the pod and um and the content in in, in the content in itself um you know there's a lot <clears throat> there's a lot of pods out there to cover impact wrestling and Everybody comes from a different angle. And that's the beautiful thing about, uh, you know, about the internet, right? Like, it's a beautiful thing about the world, right? There's a variety of people. Everybody has different perspectives. They're going to give you different, uh, unique outlooks. Everybody brings something different to the table. And, you know, we just we just do it the way that that we think is 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 fun and enjoyable. And, um, and yeah, I mean, like, you know, clearly people, the people are listening and you're responding. So thank you all for, you know, listening and responding. Thank you for, you know, sharing it, retweeting it, tagging people in it. And, um, and yeah, man, you know, like, I think that, you know, we're not necessarily advocating for change. We're just talking about these things, but, um, but it looks like, you know, people in positions to make some changes in, in impact wrestling are paying attention and are looking to improve the product. And as fans, that's what we want, right? We want to have the best possible product um, to watch and enjoy. And we want to be able to show it to our friends, show it to our family. You know, we want to bring more people in so that we're all, you know, sharing this show that we like and, um, and, uh, and we can all enjoy it together. So that's, you know, that's that's, that's nothing, nothing rocket science about that. (laughs) But the perspectives you're going to get from us are very, very different because you know, TW does work in television for a major, major, major network. Uh, you know, I've talked about a lot of times my education of, uh, you know, getting a degree in business, uh, certificate in marketing, certificate in graphic design. So that's why I talk about some of the color issues with the show. Uh, right now, I'm actually just started last week going back to school for a certificate in small business administration. So, you know, please believe uh, as I learn things through there too, I'm probably going to tie that into a lot, of, a lot of impact stuff. And then I've got years of audio editing, video editing uh, experience and stuff like that, Facebook ads, all that good stuff. I'm act- I haven't run a Facebook ad in two years because I got blo- I got suspended for life because I was uh, running some ads for uh, <laughs> this, this uh, daily fantasy sports thing that I was involved with and Facebook doesn't allow uh, anything regarding gambling. They do, oh. but you have to like, I didn't know the terms and conditions of like the wording you had to use and everything. It has to be like perfect. And they don't even send you an uh, uh, error. I mean, a, a warning. They just suspended me for life for running out. Oh, wow. so like, Whoa, okay. Wow. We're, we're a little serious here, but yeah. Yeah, so how how, like, how yeah. dare you try to make some money on this yeah, platform no. that's <laughs> harvesting our information and sharing it with uh, shadow shadow corporations? Yeah, exactly. Faux life suspended. Faux life. So uh, <laughs> let's get into these questions. Uh, I, on our last episode, not the mailbag, but the regular one, I said I wanted to Josh jump into some Josh Alexander stuff right away. Uh, we will, but I'm actually going to get to this question. Well, there's a couple of questions here from uh, James Campbell. He sent these in to me last week, and I completely glossed over them. And I, I told him I would knock him out this episode. So let's do it. Uh, he's got, he, he has a couple he's asking here. But be quick. And then uh, we'll get into this Josh Alexander stuff. But the first thing he's asking is how would we feel about Sammy returning to be a part of the honor no more storyline. So I think that's where this is going, right? I mean, it's, it's clear that someone has to save the day and there's mm. no one on the roster right now that can save the day. So it, it, 
to me, it just makes sense. Like he's the dude that comes in. He's got the history with Eddie Edwards. So this uh, this was sent before Eddie turned on every everybody. So you know, you got to take that into context a little bit. But you know, it, you think it's safe to say like he's the dude that's gonna. Um, do I think it's safe to say? I don't know. I mean, that could be Josh Alexander if he were to still be in Impact Wrestling. Um, but uh, but yeah, I think that would be an absolutely perfect role for Sammy Callahan. In my opinion, Sammy Callahan doesn't get um propped up enough as being like a a signature Impact guy. Um, you know, he had a short stint in NXT. Um, but when he got a shot to work at the top of the card and impact, you know, when he was really pushing OVE and when they had him working with Tessa and when he was the world champion, like he really, you know, took the impact title and waved the flag for impact as much, if not more so than anybody else I've seen do with that title, anybody else in that spot. So I think the Sammy Callahan really, you know, um, he should be propped up by us, the impact fans as you know one of our guys who is really you know out there just just holding us down you know what i mean going out there in this space like you know repping for impact wrestling and you know we all know he's very creative um you know he can wrestle with lots of different types of people that match he pulled out of kenny omega mwah, that was man that, that was good stuff and i think that um again sammy callahan to me would be an absolutely perfect person because if you look at the way this story to me this is like this is like the NWO WCW storyline, right? Like you had uh, a different, a different kind of version, but like, you know, look at how they had the, um, uh, the, 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 the Eddie Edwards moment was like the bash at the beach 97 with Hulk Hogan, where he turns and joins Scott Hall and Kevin Nash. And so now they're just going to run rough shot over the company. It's just going to seem like the darkest hour for impact wrestling. And then at some point you need a hero, but maybe not your, um, do your training, say your prayers, eat your vitamins, hero. Maybe you need that dark, shadowy hero who can fight evil with evil and um, and still has the best interest of the company at, at, at heart. And I think Sammy Callahan could be that perfect person, man. Like, there's a story right there waiting to be told. And I think Sammy Callahan could totally step into it. So, um, so yeah, Sammy Callahan would fit perfectly as the person to uh, to, to carry impact back from uh from honor no more's uh wrath which i fully agree with i think he got i think he, they did him a disservice a little bit with the storyline with tessa for a while uh the first half of it was great and then they just were feeding him to tessa you know they were feeding obe to tessa and i, I thought and then when sammy won the belt it was like so clear he was just a transitional champion so uh, but he, he he's definitely that dude he also is asking, and I, I don't even know if you're too familiar with her work. I know you know her, but uh, he said, do you think, guys, uh, do, do you think Impact Wrestling should try to bring in Shaw Guerrero as a ring announcer? So she's the wife or girlfriend of uh, Matt, Matthew Raywall. I, I don't remember if they're married or not. Uh, she did the ring announcing for Women of Wrestling, to my knowledge, and you know, she, she does a pretty good job. Uh I was really disappointed this episode too. I, I saw it on Twitter before the episode that uh, Pinzer was, was going to be back. <laughs> it was coming back. You know, I thought, <laughs> okay, they were listening. They said, Hey, this is a problem. I mean, even Brian Myers acknowledged on the show. Oh, I can't believe he got through that without messing up. So, I mean, <laughs> it's clearly a problem that they, they, they see as an issue. Perhaps like, Hey, there, this is our friend, you know, and we're, we're just not, you know, we don't want to move on from that. I think there's a few yeah. people, in positions in the company and I don't want to say who I'm talking about necessarily, but I think there's a few people where they're just like, well, we really like this guy. Yeah. So we don't want to take him out of this position, mm -hmm. even though he's not necessarily like excelling at it. Mm -hmm. and, and I'm talking about behind the, the behind the scenes stuff. Sure. Um, so yeah, I, I, I just don't think he, he is the answer. <laughs> um, I I've been you know advocate for a female for, for quite some time. So that's what I would like to see them do. I, th I think she's actually a, a good idea because they, they tend to bring in people who are coupled up. Yeah. You know, that yeah. kind of makes it a, a, mm -hmm. a, a lure for impact. You know what I mean? Yeah. Um, I, um, it, I, you know, I, I'm not as off put by, by Pinzer as you are. 
Um, I'm not that familiar with Shaw Guerrero. I can, you know, look up some of her stuff. Um, I do, you know, you mentioned a couple of times Melissa Santos, and it, it makes me think back to, um, you know, like Lucha Underground, just like when they would show her in the ring and she was just like stunning, you know what I mean? Like, um, you know, there's yeah. nothing wrong uh, with, um, listen, a lot of these women who are, are, are on TV in, you know, a spot like a WWE or, you know, or, or just any wrestling like TV spot, they work very hard on their bodies, right? They work, they, they, they sacrifice what they eat. They put in crazy hours in the gym. So they want to show off their body. So I don't think there's anything wrong with saying this woman looks great and it's okay to put her in here because she looks great. You know what I'm saying? Like Scarlett Bordeaux has, worked really hard to look like Scarlett Bordeaux, Bordeaux. You know what I mean? Like she could wear shorts to cover her butt if she wanted to, right? But she wants to show you that, right? It's part of her act. It's part of what she's selling. So um, I try, and I'm just pointing that out because I try to be very careful about like objectifying women, um, you know, in, in public forums and, and, and that type of thing. Um, so like, I, I started just to say that like, you know, I, I think of like when uh, like Christy Hemi used to do uh, ring announcing, they would do really cool. Like when, when just when they would start the um, the segment, like they would pan up like from her feet and see like her shoes and they go up and you see like her dress and all the way up to like her with the microphone. And it's like, you know, yeah, it, it adds to the show, man. It, it adds to the show. If you are looking forward to seeing the, the ring announcer, I remember when, um, Oh my goodness, when uh JoJo used to be the ring announcer for WWE. Right. <laughs> I was I was not missing the beginning of the match. Okay. <laughs> Rewind it. Um, and so yeah, I think that for impact, any and every little thing you can add to your show to make it a more fun, enjoyable watch, I'm all for it. Uh, and then he also asked who should Cardona feud with now that he's turned. Uh I, I would like to see him continue with Jordan Grace because I think that's the storyline that's going to make this title, you know, to bring it to some degree of relevancy. Uh, and clearly they want to continue it or they would, wouldn't have done that disqualification finish. But if there was someone else on the roster that I think, if, if we're not talking Jordan Grace, that could feud with him and could kind of keep this thing going to where it could be entertaining. I don't think uh, TW will agree with me, but I think Heath would be, a good choice because he's someone I, I think the grand not the grand championship the, the digital media championship will benefit as a Freudian from, slip yeah. <laughs> I think it'll benefit from the wrestlers who have good social followings and, and yes. cult followings totally agree. So totally agree they've been using a lot of guys to challenge for the title you know the John John Schuyler's and all that and, and the mm -hmm. people who have they had in the tournament the fall of Boz and all that you know like that's it's not going to work. Uh, mm -hmm. It's a lower card title, but it needs to be featured by mid card talent who have social followings and who can do do stuff with that. You know, I I brought up um you know doing a and just no one's doing anything like this. Do an Instagram live video that looks like a legitimate Instagram live, not a, cutting a promo, nothing. And it's like, hey guys, you know this and this, and getting attacked in the middle of that. You I know, love that. that that would just be. Yeah, catch people so off guard, you know. I think, um, so. I think during when we were in like the true lockdown era of like the pandemic, they did something on uh, Monday Night Raw. I think it was where um, uh, Thea Trinidad, uh, her her WWE name is Zelina Vega. Um, she was doing something where she was like she had like poisoned uh, Montez Ford of the Street Profits, and. So, and, and of course, Bianca Belair is Montez Ford's wife. And, you know, she don't play that. She don't play that. <laughs> and, uh, and they did something where, um, where uh, Thea Trinidad was doing a, a Twitch stream. And Bianca Belair came in, like, out of the side of the camera and just was whooping her. Oh, my God. I was like, yo, this is so good. This is so good. Like, why not? You know, I, I think that's the type of stuff you, you should definitely do more of. Um, just like you said, right? Like, you got... Uh, Matt Cardona doing an Instagram live where he's just, you know, talking trash about people and then have Heath just come in and, you know, interrupt him and, you know, and just have it go off. You can even do it where it's like, do it at a show, right? Do it like at a show where you got like Matt Cardona backstage being like, yeah, I'm about to go out here and, you know, talk to all the marks or whatever. And then just have Heath come and be like, yo, man, like, 
why don't you cool down? You know, and then and just, just have it go from there. I think that'd be dope. I think that's so smart. That's a great way to do content. Um, and again, with it being the digital media championship, it makes sense to utilize, you know, these different types of uh, these, these different ways, right? These different venues where you know your viewers are, right? You know that they're on uh, Instagram, you know, they're on all these websites. So why not put your content there? It makes perfect sense. I love yeah, that no idea. One's creating, no one's creating angles on Instagram, right? There's the tweet, the back and forth tweet type of shit, mm -hmm. um, you know, but no one's creating angles via live stream or anything like that. So that would just be something very, very different. You know, just, just, just me thinking out loud. Um, so, so we talked Josh Alexander. So Randy Adams is asking, uh, he seems to be a hot button topic, but what is your honest opinion on if Josh Alexander's situation is a work or a not, or work or not? So, I'm going to go first because I know that we totally disagree on this. Mm -hmm. I don't think it's a work. I think it's based on real events 100%. Do I think he's going to return? I feel like it's it's probable. I think he very possibly will return. I think they 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 are playing up – or I shouldn't say he's playing up stuff, but he's posting, oh, I'm at my shoot job and this and this. You know, like people are feeding into that, oh, this is a work. So do I think it's based on real events? having to do with his passport and maybe, you know, not totally coming to terms on a contract. Yes, I do. But I don't think it's a work because what is the benefit for it to be a work? There has to be a payoff. And for me, what I, I'm asking, what is the payoff of keeping him off TV, uh, taking him out of the biggest match, the main event of no surrender, having Eddie Edwards, call call the company out on twitter saying get your shit together and sign josh alexander now maybe that was like maybe that's going to lead to eddie's heel turn and so maybe he's going to tie that in we don't totally know but at the time on the surface you have the face of your company calling out the company uh and again you're pulling this guy from the biggest match of of the show that you're trying to get people to watch and you're pulling them off television totally what is the benefit of that? To me, that's a step backwards. That's, you, you know, you, you don't, if it's a work, it's to pop the impact audience when he comes back, but that doesn't do any, like he's not a bigger star for doing that. That's, that's kind of what I'm getting at. That's why I brought up if he did like James Storm and, you know, when he went to NXT and he did a couple of matches in AEW and then all of a sudden returned, like that, that's where maybe it being a work, could work uh and there would be a lot of buzz surrounding it but if he's just leaving the company and then returns to the company that you're just popping the audience who are who already watches and that's why that's what i mean when i say what's the payoff like how does that bring in more viewership how does it increase viewership to keep josh alexander off television and to remove him from matches uh and then say he does return how again how does that increase viewership so that's why i'm just saying i don't think it's a work because i don't see the benefit of doing it, you know? So that's just my opinion on it. I mean, like, I think the total opposite, bro. <laughs> like, I think, uh, I, 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 I think this is a hundred percent of work, but I, but let me just say this, like as a wrestling fan, let's, let's, let's be less focused on like not getting worked. Getting worked is why we're here. We're here to get worked. Okay. <laughs> like the, uh, we're, we are fans of a TV show. We want to buy into the storyline. So let's stop trying to look for the angles around why something, you know, I mean, I, I will do what you want to do, whatever is fun to you. But I'm saying like this idea that you don't want to get worked. What do you mean? If you don't want to get worked, why are you here? If you don't want to get worked, this is a TV show. Okay. Like, so just, just a little something about the way we approach these things. Uh, that said to me, I feel like the 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 things we're seeing suggest that there is um, there's an effort being made to keep this story alive, right? So, for example, last week's episode of Impact started with the video package about why Josh Alexander is off TV. So that to me told me, boom, they don't want us to forget about why Josh Alexander is not on TV. Okay, boom. Now you mentioned about pulling him out of the main event of No Surrender. Well. What happened to all the good guys in that main event? They got their ass whooped. So if Josh Alexander is a guy who we think is being groomed to be their next world champion, 
Why would you want him in there? Why would you want him taking the beat down with all the randoms? Like, look what, look, <clears throat> look how that team was composed once we got to the end. Okay, we had Rich Swan, we had Willie Mack, we had who else? Who else is that on that team? Rhino, Rhino, <laughs> Rhino. Uh, um, oh my God, who who else? Chris, was Saban. One, Chris Saban. Who we love, we love Chris Saban, but I mean, you know, come on. Um, <clears throat> so like. Not a lot of people on that on that team who they're trying to protect. Okay, not a lot of people on that team who are trying to protect. We would agree that Josh a Josh Alexander is someone who they're trying to protect. So I'm not saying it would kill Josh Alexander to have been one of the people catching that beat down at the end of the show from Eddie Edwards, but it doesn't necessarily make him look strong. And plus, it, it keeps the idea that if our hero was here, that maybe this would not have gone down this way. Okay, so. That's why you take him out of the no surrender main event, uh, knowing that you're planning on doing the swerve, uh, the Eddie Edwards trade, uh, the Eddie Edwards betrayal and the beat down of team impact. So you take him out of that so that your hero doesn't have to be seen getting beat down like that. Um, and then as far as like, you know, Eddie Edwards, big company guy. Right. And if you're like, Hey man, we need some support uh, making sure that, you know, People buy into this Josh Alexander thing. So Eddie Edwards tweeting, yeah, man, you know, we can't, we can't have this type of thing happen. Like, okay, boom. Then uh, the, the other thing, and this was one thing that actually kind of caught my eye as like curious and, and made me think that this was, was kind of real was when he posted that he was going to be um, appearing at the next Terminus show. And then once the impact tapings went down, he posted that, um, he was uh, that he, that he wasn't gonna be you know at the Terminus show, um, and then Jordan Grace was like, "Oh, this is BS." Well, Jordan Grace, I believe, co-owns Terminus, right, with her husband Jonathan Gresham. So she's in on that, right? So she's in. So all these people who who have been um, who have been uh, corroborating the story, right? They all have a vested interest in Impact Wrestling storylines doing well, right? Can we agree on that? Yeah. Okay, and so, uh, and then the the third thing you mentioned is like, how does it benefit? How does it how does it increase viewers? Maybe it doesn't, but what you're doing is you're doing a good fun story. And and in terms of if I were to make an argument for how this increases viewership, here's the thing too: Impact has a lot of shadow fans, and, and I talk about this all the time. Impact has a lot of people who watch the show but won't talk about it because they don't want to get called out by their friends saying, how can you watch that show? It only does, you know, a hundred thousand viewers a week, right? Like they, they, a lot of people don't have like the backbone to say, well, I watch it cause I like it, you know, like they, um, they just don't, you, you know, they, they, they don't want to be seen as, as doing something that's unpopular, God forbid. And so, uh, so conversation of Josh Alexander's pending free agency, I think will circulate you know, amongst people, Brandy Rhodes mentioned him on AEW, right? When she was trying to diss Ethan page. And um, so his name's out there, his name is out there. And I think the longer you let it marinate, the longer you let it circulate, the more it'll come up in conversations. You know, you have people like the Chris Van Vliet's of the world who just have, you know, uh, a, a, um, a, a large sphere of influence, right? Uh, the Renee Paquettes of the world, you know, the um, even to a smaller extent, the busted open radios of the world. And these are people who talk about, you know, uh, impact and wrestling as a whole. And if the story trickles out to them, you know, if they're mentioning it, then, you know, you're getting more coverage for your impact show. And so when Josh Alexander finally triumphantly returns, then it's a, it feels like a big deal. I think for Impact, and I say this all the time, one of the main things they need to focus on is making sure their live events look like fun. And I think if you are getting your Impact fans, you know, the ones who are, you know, faithfully watching the show every week, following the stories online and all of that, if you're getting them to buy into the Josh Alexander story, and then at their darkest hour, he pops up to save them from Honor No More, I think he's you got a great chance of getting that pop that you were hoping for when he came out at bound for glory, you know? Um, so I think there's, there's, um, I think there's a great opportunity here for impact to really, you know, help build up Josh Alexander, uh, build up his profile into being that, that type of player that they want him to be. So, yeah. So I said all that to say, I think this is just 
a, a, a great vehicle for Josh Alexander to improve his stock. Um, and you got to remember, assuming that Josh Alexander versus Moose will either happen at Slammiversary, which is in July, or Bound for Glory, which is in October, they got a lot of time to kill. They got a lot of time to kill before they're ready to put another Josh Alexander Moose match on the table. And so um, that maybe that question mark at Rebellion is, you know, what's the surprise going to be? And maybe the surprise will be Josh Alexander's return. So, you know, I, I think there's I think there's a lot of a lot of proof that points to uh, a, a lot of evidence, a lot of clues, a lot of hints that make me think it support the idea that this is all uh, a fun, elaborate storyline. Like I always say, people always say kayfabe is dead. And I say, no, it's not. You just have to use the right vehicles. Like if you do things on Twitter and make them feel like they're being done out of character, there's your kayfabe. There's your kayfabe. You know what I mean? Like people will believe it if it just, if it comes from a source they trust. So, you know, I, so kayfabe is not dead. You just gotta, you know, kayfabe the right way. Right. Um, I hope he can, he needs to come back with good music too, with better music, like the music of a star. This is the perfect time to do it. You know, they're already not going to recognize his music when it hits. Right. I'll tell you that right now. Uh, there's some wrestlers who you don't know until their name pops up on the screen. Yeah. Who's coming right. Out. And, um, you're already going to have that problem. So why not come up with something new, exciting that a star would come down to? So we shall to see. Um, Simon Jasper, is there anyone you think may have been pushed in the past but are kind of getting lost a bit now and then, and they need a bit of attention? So I think we universally felt that Jake something was was that dude that was getting that push, completely fell off the face of the earth, probably had to do with some personal issues, and now that he's in a good uh, good space, good headspace, he's kind of getting that that push again. Um, I'm going to throw Trey McGill into the conversation there, even though he is the exhibition champion. I just, I think they did a lot to get him to that point. Uh, I think he can get to that rich swan point too, where he started with the exhibition championship and is able to work up to the world championship possibly. Um, I don't want, I don't want them to be like, okay, well we got the title on him. So we're good. That's all we need to do. Like there's still more work to do with Trey and they've done an excellent job because I've said it many times. I did not like the Rascals. He has completely distanced himself from that gimmick. And, I mean, he's done an excellent job of it. His promos are better. His The way he looks is better. His entrance. Uh, you know, that, that's a guy, too. He's got a great theme song. He's got a great entrance. Like, that's that's star shit, you know? Yep. So, uh, so those, you know, Jake, Jake is the obvious answer, but it seems like they're going that direction. Uh, you know, but I will say – with uh, Trey Miguel, definitely. I wouldn't get too far away and get too comfortable with him. I think there's still still just a lot of work to be done. Yeah, I think those are actually great, uh, great, great examples, great points. And, you know, when you mentioned Trey Miguel, I was like, I, I totally agree. Um, he has the exhibition championship, but he has significantly cooled off. And we've recently found out that, you know, he had some personal stuff going on. Uh, my condolences to, you know, Trey Miguel and his family. Um, I, I'd like to see them do more – this kind of goes back to like, you know, the, the, the digital strategy stuff we were talking about a couple of days ago. I think that like, you know, for impact wrestling, it's not about like just getting the title on these guys, right? Like it's about making stars out of them. And I think like when you look at Trey Miguel, this guy has star written all over him, you know, like everything about this guy says star, you know, the way he wrestles speaks for itself, but there's also a fan base to be had there. Like he's a big sneakerhead, You know what I mean? Like, um, you know, do some stuff where you're following him around shopping for a day, or, you know, you do some, like you find like a, you find like a charity and you have, you know, Trey Miguel, you know, take a kid shopping or, you know, something like that, uh, or, 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 you know, just, you know, show off his, his sneaker collection, you know, talk to him about it, you know, do like, you know, a day in his life, going to the gym with him, practicing his moves, you know, all just so many things to give people more insight. So they really see these guys, they develop, um, uh, 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 kind of a kinship, you know, with these guys. Like, that's how you build a fan base, right? Like, remember when we first saw, when we first met Reza Ramon and he was walking down the streets in Miami, man, and he was, uh, you know, and, and, and he was he was, he was was hanging out in the hood and, you know, uh, eating ice cream with the kids or whatever it was and, or eating at the restaurant and, like, threatening with, hey, Chico, 
you do this, you know, you do, do, do. you know what I mean? Like you get to know the character before, you know, uh, b- before they even really step into a ring, you get to know them. And I just think impact to just do more because you have these, 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 these um, potential stars sitting right here in your lap. And don't get me wrong. I understand, right? Like time is money. It takes time to produce these type of things, but it takes time, which means it takes money, you know, it takes manpower to produce all this type of stuff. But I think, again, like the opportunities are right there to build stars that people are going to come out of their house, go in their pocket and come see you, come see these guys and cheer for them because they learned to love them because they were doing the charity thing. Or they love the fact that, you know, his favorite sneakers are the Jordan threes and my favorite are the Jordan threes. And you know what I mean? Like there's all these things that fans connect with people over. And again, there's like great, great opportunities there. And those are ways that you can like help heat people up. So now back to the question about someone who was getting a lot of attention, but could stand to get a little more now. And the first person I thought of when you mentioned that was Ace Austin. Um, You know, we've talked uh, uh, so many times about, you know, Ace Austin got some pushes before, but, you know, he's failed so many times that it forced you to ask the question, how many times can you fail before people don't care anymore? And I don't know. I mean, I don't think Ace Austin has, he's, he's not won a bunch of big matches but I feel like he's, he's still been kept relatively strong, relatively relevant. He gets a lot of, you know, talking and character pieces. So I think Ace Austin is very easy to heat up. You know what I mean? Like, all he's got to do is just, yeah. just just have him start winning. You know, start start winning some more big quality matches. I feel like every time Ace Austin is in one of those big quality matches, we're like, you know, he could win. He could win. He'll be the youngest champion ever. You know what I mean? And, um, and so I think Ace Austin is a guy who, um, you know, he's sitting right there. And, uh, and yeah, I mean, like, I, I think at any time, right. You just, you just heat him right up. And I think you got uh, a, a young, big star, you know, right there on your hands, just waiting for you to make them. Agreed. I didn't think of Ace Austin. So it's actually a, a, a great answer. Uh, AJ Mahoney asked, and, and folks, you want to get in involved in this, uh, or get involved in this, the Facebook engagement group on Facebook. That's where we pull the questions from. Uh, that, that's the number one place. We might grab some from Twitter here or there. Uh, and, and when we do the impact reviews, we'll, we'll jump into the YouTube comments and things of that nature. But if you want to ask like a straight up question, you want to make sure it gets answered. Facebook, the Impact Lounge and big, little, 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 ah, Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook. Got that out of my system. There it is. So AJ Mahoney <laughs> said, who do you think Impact should sign for both the knockouts and mail divisions that are free agents right now? Um, and then he also said, what are your thoughts on announcing Alex Shelley versus Jay White out of the blue? Uh, touching on that real quick, people were re- very excited for that, the Jay White-Alex uh, Shelley announcement. It was totally out of the blue. We haven't seen Alex Shelley on Impact Television in over a year. I know it doesn't feel that long, but it's been you know slightly over a year. Uh, hard to kill. He was supposed to you know wrestle at, wasn't able to do it. Uh, you know, Read a couple of interviews with him. He, I can't say he sounds totally like invested and like, oh, I'll be back and this and this. Like, it, it's one of those, oh, if it happens, it happens. Uh, so it happened. He's coming back. Could be for this one match. I don't know. If you remember when they announced the Jonathan Gresham versus Chris Saban match, they're like, hey, we're going to announce a, you know, we've got a big announcement in one hour. The Twitter engagement was, was crazy. Yo, that's why people are saying out of the blue because this is one of those matches. You'd be like, hey, your first match for no surrender is going to be announced in, in 30 minutes, so you're not going to want to miss this. Granted, it's on the same level as the Ring of Honor Championship, but yo, know, you know, people were very excited about this. You just increase social chatter. I was I was talking to TW a little bit before we started how how Twitter works a little bit. The more engagement you get on your post, the more organic organically it spreads on twitter so if you if you put out a tweet nobody likes it in the first hour the chances of anyone seeing it after that point are pretty slim but if you put out a tweet and people are retweeting and they they, you know even if the people have zero followers but they're retweeting and twitter sees yo the the followers like this post they're going to keep it going all day so that people can see it so the way that you you work around making that the way you make that work for you is to say, hey, in 30 minutes, we're going to announce this match. And then when everyone checks in 30 minutes, you're just getting 
retweets, likes, comments, boom, 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 the minute the tweet comes out, and then it just spreads organically throughout the day. But when you just do it out of the blue like that, you're not going to get those same, same engagement numbers. So, um, you know, just kind of a, a trick how Twitter works. And, uh, and then I'll answer the other question here, then, then uh, throw it over to you. Who do I think they should sign? Um, you know, the knockouts, I've always, for years, I've been a big proponent of Kelly Klein. I, I don't, I, I guess maybe she has just issues outside of the ring that's preventing that. Uh, but I know when the first time I saw her in Women of Honor, I thought she was looked looked like a star. Uh, you know, um, Layla Gray is another one, and uh, Alex Gracia. Those are a couple that um, you know from the indie side of things that I would love to see pop into the division. And for the males, it's kind of hard because AEW is just, I mean, snatching these guys up left and right. But I, I guess the one I would like to see is um, God, the guy from Ring of Honor, the Peacock guy. I don't know why his name is escaping uh, me. Dalton Castle. Dalton Castle. I think he would be very much lost in the shuffle in, in uh, AEW. Mm. You know, but I think on the in- Impact platform, he could, you know, have the kind of impact that he did in Ring of Honor, you know, uh, the kind of status. So I'd like to see him see him come over. Um, On the Dalton Castle thing, like, I can't say that I'd be, like, excited looking forward to that. I think you got to be very careful about this one thing that AEW is in the midst of doing now. And I just uh, makes me roll my eyes so heavy is just trying to run back stuff that happened other places. Like, listen, we may not have watched that stuff that happened other places, but we're aware of it. You know what I mean? Like, um, like uh, uh, again, I didn't watch Adam Cole in new Japan, but I'm aware of some of the stuff that went on there. Right. Like just through, through the conversations, so trying to just recreate that stuff and then, you know, putting back together the undisputed era and like, I, just, me personally, I'm, I believe just come up with your own thing, man. Come up with your own thing. Give me a fresh story. Uh, and, and that's what I thought of when you mentioned like Dalton Castle. I'm like, okay, so he's going to come do his ring of honor stick from like, what was that? 2014 or whatever, whenever that was big. And, um, right. and uh, that's no diss to him. I'm not dissing him at all. Uh, I'm just saying, like, I think for impact, you know, whatever, man, like, I guess it'll be it'll be fresh to a lot of people. But, you know, give give us what's fresh. Give us what's new. Give us what's next. You know what I mean? Give us something new. Uh, and 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 as opposed to just trying to play the hits, you know, that that were good in other people's organizations a long time ago. You know, what I mean, <laughs> um, in terms of people that I'd like to see signed for like the knockouts. You mentioned Lila Gray. Yeah. Oh man. Um, I, I, I think Lila Gray could be, I think she could, she could be a, a, a good addition. Um, but the first person I thought of was uh, Amber Rodriguez. If you guys uh, Google Amber Rodriguez or just, you know, look her up on like Twitter, she does a lot of vignettes and you can see like she has the character piece down so well. I watch her, you know, her 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 matches, and I'm like, you know, she could use more ring time to develop, but but the character piece is there. It is there, man. And I feel like it's ready for like a big platform. Um, and again, I think, you know, when, when you watch like independent wrestlers, there's such levels to them, right? Like there's people that look like they're putting in very little time on this, on this uh pursuit there's people who look like they're putting in as much time as they can and there's people that look like they are going all in like this is plan a i'm going to sink or swim based on what i can do uh with this wrestling career and those are the people who you know show up on your independent show looking like john cena looked when he was on the indies you know what i mean um but even those guys right like nine times out of ten they need a lot of time to develop. You got to put in, it's just, it's, it's, it's like in, anything you want to be good at. You got to put in the hours. You got to put in the reps. You need to get a lot of reps, right? And if you only are available to wrestle so much, you can only get so much better at a time. You know, um, you're working a full-time job, trying to support yourself, trying to support your family. And so I think like companies like Impact, right? Like you got have like a developmental budget, man. Like where you could set people up where you say, Hey, uh, I'm going to, you know, pay you to go work at OVW for a year where you can, you know, get a lot of time in the ring, 
uh, you know, developing under like an Al Snow, you know, I'm, I'm going to pay you not an on TV salary, but, you know, close to it. So, you know, you can still pay your bills while you develop as a wrestler. You know, I think you got to do stuff like that. And I, and when I think of someone like, like an Amber Rodriguez, right? Like, again, go watch some of her, some of her uh, vignettes that she does. She does this character called uh, the mad esthetician. Um, she's just like, uh, you know, oh, we, we talked about this before. You mentioned like, uh, you, you, you get like, uh, you get like some, some beauty stuff done. And so, you know, about estheticians. And so like her character is, you know, like, imagine one of those is like a crazy person and they were like obsessed with beautifying you and fixing all your imperfections. So it's a really great character. Um, oh, by the way, Amber Rodriguez, if you guys want to know more about her, she actually did an interview uh, on the Black Wrestling Podcast. So just Google that. It's uh, Wrestling, R-A-S-S-L-I-N, uh, Black Wrestling Podcast. Look that up. It's, you know, get a chance to know her a little bit. Shout out to the Black Wrestling Podcast. Shout out to Amber Rodriguez. Um, so, yes, I would definitely look at them. And, again, I mentioned this, this act a while ago when Impact was in Vegas. These guys, Lights, Camera, Faction, they played – uh, impact security when impact was in Vegas a few months ago. And, um, I've been following them ever since then. And they do really great vignettes. Um, it's a, it's, it's like three or four guys who were all kind of the size of like a Chris Bay, but, <clears throat> but they, they, but they seem like a lot of fun, great energy dudes. Um, and there's another group out there since we're, you know, uh, signing ring of honor people, uh, Shane Taylor promotions, is like yeah. it's like three or four dudes and they are all ass kickers man like straight up ass kickers and um and if you guys don't know about them look them up google them um uh, i believe uh the brother shane taylor himself had a match with kenny king uh at the last ring of honor show and it was it was brutal it was brutal and so um yeah those those are guys i think would add some presence and some real grit to the impact show you need guys like that man like you know think of like a new jack you know think of like um you know uh like a sammy callahan like people that add grit to your show like a certain a certain you know i don't want that cookie cutter like you know this guy's coming out here he might slap a fan you know <laughs> like it's good to have guys like that and so shane taylor promotions lights camera faction amber rodriguez definitely lila gray yeah. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Uh, but uh yeah i think those are all those will all be good quality additions to uh to the impact roster because impact is a developmental territory right now you know impact has done a really good job of introducing new characters building them up and getting them ready for whatever is next and so i think that's all you know a good group of people who would make good use of the platform that impact has what do you think about the Alex Shelley versus Jay White announcement out of the blue? I like it. Um, I'm not necessarily excited about Alex Shelley per se. I thought it was kind of weird how he just, you know, he was unable to make the uh, the the six man with Kenny Omega, which was fine. Opened a, a, a door for Moose to step into the spotlight. And I think that's worked out. I think everyone would agree that's worked out pretty yeah. well. Um, but he really has seemed kind of indifferent about wanting to work for Impact Wrestling, which means I... I don't know. You know what I mean? Like, I don't, I don't know. So anyway, whatever. I mean, it's, it's not my company who, you know, whatever, but, um, but you know, Alex Shelley's good and uh, Jay White is good, but I just like the idea of announcing a match in advance and then promoting and building to it. So it's something people seem to be excited about. Hopefully it'll add to some more ticket sales. I saw somebody post into the, um, into the engagement group that, that venue probably holds about 500 or so people, which I think is perfect. Um, I would like to see, I'd like to see more unique setups for the fans. Like even if you only got five, if you got 500 people in there, you know, rowdy, packed and loud, set them up in a unique way where we're seeing them like sitting off the balcony or whatever, light the crowd good so that it looks unique, man. Like every AEW show, every AEW set looks exactly the same. Same thing for WWE. Give us something that looks different. Give us a product that looks different. You're not fooling anybody to think you're in a 10,000 seat arena, but maybe that more intimate feel kind of like what we got when we saw ECW kind of like what you get when you see GCW, right? Like um, the, the last GCW show at the Hammerstein ballroom, it looked like people were hanging off the rafters, man. And 
I think that's dope. Like it looks like you have a hot product. So playing a smaller space, um, but light your crowd. You know what I mean? Light your crowd. Let us see them. Like I don't want to see. Figure out a way to get those people on their feet, cheering and enjoying the show, screaming and interacting with the entire, the entire performance. Okay, that's what you need to be focused on. Um, so yes. So uh, uh, announcing the crowd ahead of time, I'm sorry, announcing the card ahead of time, getting people to, you know, buy in early so you can announce that the show is sold out. Who cares if it's only 500 people? Okay, like announce the card, sell the tickets, get the fans in there, set them up in a way that's fun and looks unique for television, light the crowd, let's see them and make sure that they're having a good ass time. All right, AK Infinity asks, what talent is going to be the one that ultimately defeat Honor No More? I think we already came to the conclusion that uh, it would be Sammy Callahan. Or and Josh then, Alexander. You know, or Josh Alexander, yep. <laughs> uh, since Eddie Edwards is a heel now and Josh Alexander is gone for now, who's the top babyface? Uh, for me, the top babyface is probably W. Morrissey. Uh, <laughs> you don't like the thoughts of that. I mean, they've heated him up pretty good. He, he's over with the crowd. There's a clear lack of baby faces. You mentioned the team impact, and you, we ran off the names there. Like, man, when you when you got to throw Rhino in there uh, as, as your top five baby faces, like that's a bit of a problem, you know? Right. So uh, I don't know. I, I, I mean, I'd say it's Morrissey, you know, but um, it probably is Morrissey. You're you're probably yeah. right. It probably is Morrissey. Um, but it just makes me wonder, like, you know, he lost clean. You know, he had a match that you booked to hell and back. Um, and so what do you do now if that's your top baby face? Um, but I think it's very important to um, not just throw people away, you know, like after you do something with them. Like, again, this is a spot where you should be able to come back to Rich Swan. Yeah, this is a spot that, yeah. where Rich Swan should be able to, to, he should have been winning nonstop ever since he lost that title. And then he should be able to step to Moose right now and say, hey, Moose, last time you had a title, who took it from you? You know what I mean? And, mm-hmm. and th- there's, your, there's your feud right there, right there. But they've done boo-boo with Rich Swan since then. And so you can, you can put him on there. You can still tell that story, but it wouldn't be nearly as good, nearly as effective as it would be if you had kept Rich, Schw- Rich Swan strong. Say that four times fast. Uh, it, since then so um so yeah i mean so who would be the top baby face good god i don't think there is one i mean you could say morrissey but i i you know oh god who is the top baby face who and everyone who? they're bringing in from outside the company are heels so right uh, you know John, jonathan gresham's the only person like maybe they just maybe he gets a program with them like i don't think they do champion versus champion though so that's probably an issue but Right. I mean, when they're bringing in, they're not bringing in baby faces. In a vacuum, if you ask me who was the top baby face, I'd say Josh Alexander, right? But uh, with him, you know, off the table for now, you know, who is it? Uh, you know, I, I, I'd, I'd like to see what the status is on Sammy Callahan. Yeah, they just yeah. they just don't have a lot of people who have uh, any vested. Oh, Trey Miguel's there. You know what I mean? But yeah. when you say top baby face, you know, I feel like a lot of times you're, you're, what you're really asking is who can be the good guy challenger for the world title. Um, okay. And, you know, Jake, something could be a top baby face. Trey Miguel could be a top baby face, but again, it takes time. You got to heat these people up and heating up a baby face. I think is a little bit different than heating up a heel. Like heating up a baby face has to happen over time. You got to see them win. And at the same time, You have to endear them to the audience. You know what I mean? Because again, you need that pop. When that music hits, you need people to be like, yes, that's my guy. Come out here and do your thing, you know? So, um, so yeah, I mean, like, you know, I, I, I I can't say they have a top baby face right now. You know, I'm I'm itching for Sammy Callahan to get back because I think he's somebody that can slide right into that spot. Um, I think double W Morrissey has been ascending, but the reason why I can't call t- W Morrissey a top baby face is because they, they did the, the, the change with him and put him in the title match. So quickly, there was no time to fall in love with W Morrissey. You know what I mean? Right. There was no time to feel like I want him to win because there was never an, I want him to win because, you know, and you need yeah. that and you need that for a baby face. So yeah, I don't know. They have a top baby face right now. 
I would say yeah. that. Um, so he, he also asked this question. This is very interesting. He says that there was a concept or gimmick called the impact challenge. What would it be and who should come from it? So obviously you're going to need a time to think on that. If there was a concept or a gimmick called the impact challenge, what would it be? Um, this, what I would do, I would kind of take the open challenge idea a little bit, but I would highlight a potential indie star every week, every other week, whatever you want to do. And I know it sounds kind of cheesy, but the gimmick would be, I mean, the gimmick to me would be to grab a random opponent's name out of a hat or, or do the little uh, bingo ball thing where you crank it and pull a name out. Um, like they used to actually show people do for the Royal Rumble. And I think they, for, I think for the, some of the impact stuff, I, I know they've done it um, to where they, you know, it, they have to impress impact impact brass or whoever whoever it is, but it's like it's almost a pick your poison type of concept. You don't know who your opponent's going to be. You just randomly randomly grab someone, and uh, you might you might get W Morrissey one week, might be Trey Miguel the next week, and you just see how you fare against that competitor. Uh, it would also include some sort of video package of the wrestler beforehand, uh, especially on social media, even if it's. Uh, j just videos they upload from their phone that Impact would push. So you can't just have a nobody. Um, you you got to put something into us getting to know them and investing in them a little bit, and then uh, you know just being being uh, slapped with a random challenger from the roster. So. I think that's cool. Um, when you mentioned like um, Impact Challenge, right? So basically, you're saying like we're going to do something called the Impact Challenge. What is it, right? And so um, it made me think about like little things WWE used to do. Um, like they had like this mixed match challenge where they took like a mixed tag teams of like uh, male superstars and a female superstar. And there was like a tournament of them. And the I, I, don't, I don't remember what the winning couple got, but you know, it was ways to tell like little decaf stories. Coffee. What'd they get? A cup of decaf coffee. I, I, yeah, I <laughs> right. That was the homecoming extra decaf and yeah. um right and so do uh, you know maybe do something like that where you have like uh you have it, but it was like mostly like it was mostly i think it all took place on facebook all the matches took place on like yeah. facebook and so maybe do something like that where um i say this all the time you know i know that impact probably doesn't want to necessarily like directly copy off the royal rumble but impact does really good gauntlet matches and I would do a pay-per-view where the main event is a, a gauntlet match. And like, it's it's understood that the winner of this gauntlet match is going to get, you know, the title shot at the next big pay-per-view. And um, again, similar to like the Royal Rumble or the Elimination Chamber, like something like that. But like, um, but again, like a gauntlet match is such a great concept. You could do like an hour long gauntlet match easily, easily. Yeah. You know what I mean? You that, that could be half your show or even all your show. You could do an hour of interviews and promos and an hour long gauntlet match. And that would be phenomenal. You know what I mean? Like I, I, I think I would love a show like that. Honestly, I think I would love a show like that. As a matter of fact, or you could do two, you do one with the women, one with the men. Um, I oh my god, that would be such a good show. Cause imagine how good the 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 actual match would have to be to go an hour. You know, um, yeah. so like, yeah, I mean, like, so, so I, I do something maybe like the impact challenge would be like some sort of, um, you know, some sort of thing where you have like different, different people on the roster who are going to be competing in the impact challenge, uh, or excuse me, pretend, competing in these gauntlet matches, um, compete in like a series of challenges that require like fan, I don't know like fan voting or you know something like that, and the winners of the Impact Challenge, male and female, their uh their their prize would be they get to enter the gauntlet last, and so again you do it and you make it mean something, you give it some stakes, and uh you know again the the challenge itself could be anything, it could be like you know uh, getting the most votes on like. Um, your exercise routine or 
you know what I mean? Or like, or like your, your outfit or something like that. You know what I mean? Like have like one week, the impact challenge could be like, who had the best, who had the best sneakers or who had the best outfit. Um, one could be like, tell me a joke. You know, make me something that, something like that, like, you know what I mean? Like, like, boom, like, boom, I'm Jordan Grace. You know, here's my joke. You know what I mean? Like you tell the joke, you deliver it and be like, vote for me. If you like this joke, you know, whatever. And then just have everybody do that. Like you, you do it over like the course of a, over the course of a series of weeks. And um, again, the winner of the challenge would get to come into the gauntlet match last. And the winner of the gauntlet match would get a title shot at the next pay-per-view. I, I, like I said, I think impact does really good gauntlet matches. And I think they should, um, I, I, it, I mean, to me, like the match in and of itself is episodic television almost. You know what I mean? You tell a story of who's get who's going to qualify for the match. And then you tell, then you tell a story of like, you know, who, uh, who may get the advantage of coming in to the match last. And then you have the match and then the match has stakes. Like to me, I think it's a, uh, you know, I don't know why they don't do more of that. Right. I like that. I like that. Uh, we've got a couple more. Um, well, we got one here. Uh, Colby Furchin was asking, do you think Impact has a lap, lack of top-level baby faces? I think we've, we've pretty much covered that that's 100% the case. Absolutely. Pat Carlton Mel asked, do you think they're going to have the inspiration hold the titles until the record set by Eric Young at ODB <laughs> nearly 500 days is broken? Uh, they keep stalling title defenses. Uh, I wouldn't be shocked. Um, I know that's I think the value in the inspiration right now is them being the knockout tag team champions. I'm not saying they don't have value otherwise. I think they they do. I find them entertaining. The crowd is is into them when they come out. You know, uh, we don't know really know if they're heels or baby faces. It's kind of weird. They came as heels, but it's like they got such a baby face reaction right away that you know they're. I they're mean, definitely heels. They're heels. They're heels. Okay. Uh, I, but I do think the value was keeping the belts on them for as long as possible. Mm -hmm. I don't think them chasing for the belts is going to work. No. If they're not the, you know, we've said this many times with the knockouts is that if there's not a title involved, it's like, what the hell do we, we do with them? You know, right. they they haven't had like really good engaging. If you think about all the good feuds right now, um, you know, that involve the titles, uh, you know, Chelsea Green's also involved in it. Um, so you can't really count her, but the one, you know, it, it's still just title driven. The, the knockouts that are outside of it, they don't necessarily have to be challenging for the title. Like I use Chelsea Green as an example. She's still part of that storyline. They're just kind of like floating. They look like they were going to try to do a Lady Frost and uh, Giselle Shaw feud, but all they did was have them fight right away. And oh, that Giselle was a mistake. Huge mistake. Yeah. They, they, the two of them as the bottom of the knockouts, card and, and, and brand new like needed something for us to get to know them and you kind of talked about the, the video packages earlier and into, you know the razor ramon thing they were just playing you know little video packages for Giselle shaw but we didn't get to know her the audience didn't get to know her for anything right. you know what i mean we didn't get to know the gimmick there was no interviews no her talking nothing like that like it's great to get the little packages but give us an something to get to know her because then when she came out made the debut it was just like right um uh, and she didn't actually use her finisher in either of her two matches so far. That she does a corkscrew from the top rope. Mm. She did a version of it to beat Lady Frost. She did a corkscrew like off a, a springboard corkscrew off the middle turnbuckle or something right. like that. She does a top rope corkscrew big splash and is really really impressive. And then when she wrestled Alicia the other day on the digital media match, she just did like a spinning kick to the middle of the back. <laughs> it was so I don't know. We haven't really, like, Alicia was on the ground, kind of like all fours type of thing. Right. I think it was supposed to be a, a, a spinning kick to the back of the head, but it okay. kind of missed. So, but anyway, um, but that's just an, a, you know, an example. So, with the inspiration, I do think the the money is keeping the belts on them as long as humanly possible. I think they're going to drag out this thing with the influence as long as they possibly can, because once it's no longer the influence, like, who the hell is the challenger? Exactly. What else so, do they have? Yeah. So uh, I, I I really do think that they're going to be, they're going to hold it for a while, for a long time. Yeah. Yeah, I, I totally agree. Because what else are you going to do? What else are you going to do? I mean, like, I don't know. You know what I mean? Um, 
the inspiration they have they have an entertaining act so let them do their act because there has not been an investment in the knockouts uh tag team division so they're you know again what are you going to do who's going to take those titles from them you know um like rosemary needs a fresh coat of paint you know what i mean um there's a i i you know she was um and again when i say these things man like I say there was no disrespect to the performers, no disrespect to the work they put in or the, um, you know, the, the, the physical toll that being a professional wrestler takes on your body. Like I, I, as a fan, as a consumer, um, my opinion matters. Okay. So you can try to discount my opinion all you want to, but it is what it is. I've been watching Rosemary for years. And just like I was saying the other day, you know, I was, um, watching a Rosemary and Jade match from like 2016, I think it was. And I was like, man, this was dope. And th that's why people were like, oh, bring back Jade. And I'm like, yo, but wait a minute. You know, like, yo, bring back Jade. Cool, because Jade was good. But like, let's not try to run back these matches from 2016, because it ain't 2016. And neither one of them is the same wrestler they were in 2016. Not saying that's for better or for worse, but they're not. The story's not where it was. The, you know, um, just the fact that we've seen it before. You know, we saw it a lot. Like, they had some bangers, man. Some cage matches. Like, man, they were doing it. Um, but, like, you know, Rosemary had a major injury. And, um, you know, props to her for, you know, recovering and working her way back. But at this point in time, like, you, you can't say that, you know, that she's, that she's, um, um, that she's, like, one of the knockouts you look forward to seeing more. You know, like, you, um, I, I can only speak for myself. You know what I mean? Like I said, like, uh, like I, I love anybody who's really into their character and she really, you know, presses her character, but it feels like they've kind of run their course with everything they can do with her at this point. Like they need to freshen up that gimmick somehow. Um, again, look at Becky Lynch, right? Like look at Becky Lynch. Becky Lynch was on top of the damn world. Becky Lynch got two or three, this is sports center commercials, right? Everybody don't get those. Okay. People in the NFL, NBA, and, and Major League Baseball and, and uh and NHL, like you don't just get those commercials. She's a big, 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 big star. Big star, okay? Real star. And um, and she came back and she switched up her character. Okay. Like people in the wrestling business, you have in television in general, you have to switch stuff up, right? Like when we watch things on Netflix. When we get into, you know, season, usually by the time we get to like season three of something, we're like, all right, they need to freshen up this formula a little bit. You know what I mean? They need to freshen up this formula a little bit because, you know, we've kind of seen how this character deals with X, Y, Z. You know, you got to find, you got to give me some type of twist to tell me this is not going to be the exact same thing. So it's just, that's the nature of television. That's the nature of television. You got to freshen things up. Right. And so I, I stand on what I say. Rosemary needs a fresh, fresh coat of paint. That's not an attack on Rosemary. It's just, this, this has been the same character for what now? Six years. You know what I'm saying? Like you, you gotta, you gotta freshen it up. Moose, right? What did Moose do? Switched it up. Moose has tried to switch it up a few times. Okay. But he found something that really worked and he's ran with it and, and, and it's taken him to, to the top of his company. So like switching it up is a good thing, right? So again, when I say these things, they're not to insult the performers, but as consumers, if you want to keep our attention, you got to switch it up. You can't do the same thing every day, every week, week in and week out. Um, I'd love to be excited about the idea of Rosemary getting a knockouts title match or getting a, uh, getting in a tag team title match or whatever. But like, what are they doing with her to make you excited about her? Right. Yeah, I mean, they had the belts with a K, and it was it was just very, very bland. And, you know, Allison K, who I mentioned many times, uh, you know, I know very fairly well, she had asked the question, this is probably half a year ago, they were wanting to do some indie dates, her and uh, Marty Bell of the Hex. Who are some female tag teams out there that we can work with? And people couldn't answer the question because they're just like, there, there really aren't that many that are, like, paired up as a team, you know? So, or ones that we get to know, like I'm sure they're out there, right? I'm sure they're yeah. out there, but who's like promoting them? Like who's giving them shine? Uh, my yeah. man Duke from Duke Loves Wrestling, he talks about the um, the Renegade Twins. Um, look, 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 look up the Renegade Twins on um, on your social media of choice and, yeah, and check true. them out. Yeah. But 
there's not there's not a whole lot of, of, of female tag teams that are getting shine. So if you're a female tag team out there and this comes across your ears, promote yourself, man. Get yourself out there. Go out there and do some interviews. It, it don't matter if you think the podcast is only getting, you know, 50 views. Maybe one of those people who's those 50 views will circulate it to somebody who gets 50 more views. And You know what I mean? Like, do what you got to do to promote yourself. But, like, we're not hearing about these female tag teams. Um, but you mentioned Allison K, and I would love... <laughs> I'm a big Alice K fan. Um, I'd like to see Alice K and Marty Bell uh, come back. Um, you know they they got a they got a tag team act they're working right now, and um and it seems like a lot of fun. You know what I mean? Like every time I see Alice K on social media, everything she does seems like a lot of fun. So I think if she were to you know find herself back on Impact Wrestling, um, her and Marty Bell like as a tag team, I'd be very interested to see you know what that looks like. Yeah, and I think they're gonna have those NWA belts for a long time because NWA champions tend to. And especially because of exactly what we're saying, there's a bit of a lack of, you know, uh, female tag teams out there. So, uh, but they would be nice to come and challenge uh, if, if they were to lose those belts. Yeah. Uh, last one, Donald Hill asks, I freaking cat, does Impact, <laughs> <laughs> she keeps hitting my phone. Does Impact need some kind of training facility to train new wrestlers since they intend on doing more? gut checks and reality shows nothing as big as a performance center but AEW has a nightmare factory even roh had their own dojo where they train uh, trained a lot of their wrestlers so yeah it would be nice to see something even dixie carter once upon a time was like yeah i probably need something like that and it, it, it just never happened they've teased uh you know you know the uh bcw in canada kind of being it and then doc gallows tried to on twitter be like oh Gloriado pros pros the impact developmental territory like yeah sure it is um they do need something like that to where you know prospective wrestlers can come and be like and work their way towards doing something with impact and they can know hey we got a chance at these guys because right now independent dudes they're they're getting on dark and getting more exposure than they could yeah doing anything else you know what i mean and it's they, they have to have something in place because, you know, we see Jackson Stone. We talk about that all the time. Like, what the hell is he doing, you know? Right. Nothing. So, clearly, they have nothing in place because they haven't been able to develop the dude to get on television for whatever right. reason. So, they, they need something, man. Um, they, even from a branding standpoint, people knew about the Ring of Honor dojo. Like, oh, I trained at the dojo. Like, that means something. It sounds like it means something, you know? So, I would like to see something if it is BCW or whatever the hell it is, Lariato Pro, like make brand that to where people know like, hey, this is the stomping grounds for making their way up to impact. I thought they had a partnership with OVW. What happened to that? Oh yeah, that's right. That that uh they have mentioned that in the past, but I mean either it's not going well or maybe it's not doing anything or it's a branding thing where no one knows what the hell is going on. Yeah. But you, you know, know I I could be wrong about this, but because we haven't seen like any or a lot of like AEW talents on, I'm sorry, of OVW talents on Impact. And it seemed like even if you just send them up as like enhancement talents, that's a great opportunity for them to, you know, get some TV time, get some more ring work in. But the fact that we haven't seen that tells me that maybe there's not that type of relationship in place. Um, and another thing that, it, you know, it could be would be like, you know, again, I, I mentioned earlier when I was talking about Amber Rodriguez, and I think that you know, part of it would have to be um, if your impact, right? Like if you're going to send somebody to OVW, right? I, I'm pretty sure like you have to pay, right? Like you got to pay the the wrestler uh, some sort of living wage where they're not going to starve to death. Um, you, I'm sure you probably got to pay OVW for the training they're going to provide. Um, so there's probably like financial costs associated. And the thing is like, listen, man, like if your impact, you got to spend the money to play, man. You got to spend the money to play. Like we're sitting here talking about all these things that, that they can do to, you know, to be better. They know this stuff. Scott Demore, right? Like Scott Demore has yeah, been yeah, in the wrestling yeah. business forever, yeah. ever. Right. Yeah. Like they, they know this stuff. So, um, you know, it's all about if the person with their hand on the money faucet is willing to make the investments to, uh, to develop impact wrestling. You know what I mean? I think that, um, Gosh, Demore and Callis took over in what 2017? No, no, 2017 was the uh the <laughs> the global force slam anniversary. So okay. they took over in it had to be, was it 2018 or 2019? Had to be 2018. I That's think it was 
I think it was January 2018 when uh, Demore and Cal took over. So we're on year four. We're on year four. And I think that, it's, you know, it's tough because, you know, things really slowed down for like a year and a half, right? Like you couldn't do live shows. And I think that's one of the biggest uh, ways that we're gauging growth in this conversation. So that creates a little bit of an excuse there. But part of me feels like they've hit a growth ceiling. Um, part of me feels like they've hit a growth ceiling. Part of me feels like it is growing, but just like very incrementally slow. And it just, and I just want to see it done faster. Um, I'm not sure which one of those it is, but I think that if you are, you know, Lynn Asper, you know, the Ed Nordholm, the, the impact, I'm um, sorry, the Anthem money people, I think, that uh Demore has shown enough to where you could probably trust him with a little more, right? You could trust him to say, all right, let's make an investment in digital marketing. Let's make an investment in uh in talent development. Um, you know, let, let's let's make some investments and let's let's see what we need to really turn it up a notch from these perspectives. And um, you know, I, I think, you know, like I said, I think that they were the plan was to operate this um this, 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 this production that is impact wrestling on like a shoestring budget. And mm -hmm. one of those things where they just wanted to show that they could run a wrestling company. That's not losing, you know, bleeding money. And um, I think, I, I don't know the financials, but I can just, you can tell the places where they've cut corners. Right. And so, yeah. um, so, you know, I, I say, man, if, if you're the, if, if you're the, the, the parent company, if you're Anthem, I think it's it's fair to say at this point they've shown you that they know what they're doing to an extent. Why not see if you can you know if you can make it a little better by by dumping some money into it, man? Like, you know, create a budget, man. Say like, look, okay, we're over the next three years, we're gonna we're gonna add a million dollars to the budget over the next three to, three years or whatever. And I know that sounds like a lot of money, but to these big companies, that's not that kind of money. You know what I mean? Um, yeah. And so you know whatever, like say wh whatever the number is. Not that was just a number I threw off the top of my head. But, you know, let's say you're going to add this this number to the budget over the next three years and see what they can do, you know, see what they can do, see if they can if they can make it look prettier, if they can make it sound like more fun, if they can reach more people, bring more people to shows, you know. But I think at this point, I think they've done what they can do up to this point. You know, like, I, is, is that weird? Is that pessimistic? You know what I mean? Because I, I, I think I think Scott Demore is doing great things in terms of building bonds and building bridges and relationships for impact wrestling. Like, you know, again, go back to 20, 2018 impact wrestling was like the name to not be spoken, you know? And like, now they're right there in the conversation of talking about places where wrestlers might go to perform. And yeah. so, um, and, and that in and of itself took a lot of work. It took a lot of work. It took a lot of time. And so I think if you want to see them take another step, then you understand that has to that has to be an investment. Absolutely. So uh, good answer, and I think uh, that's going to do it for the mailbag episode this week. So again, check out the Impact Lounge engagement group on Facebook uh, to get involved with this show each and every week. And as always, you can find me at BQ Speaks on Twitter and TW. You can catch me out here at TW Talking About on your social media of choice. You can also follow my podcast page at Talking About Pod on Twitter or search Talking About Pod on uh, YouTube and uh, follow me there. All right. So that's going to do it for us. Thanks for checking us out. We will catch you next time with an episode of The Cool Factor. We're out. Peace. Peace.